when I prepare that new account and process the beginning of new plan, we have another type of domain. And with one of my colleagues uh, at HP. Uh, but we had some issues that we it will not allow us to do where exactly that talks so I will channel another slightly uh, similar topic around the governance uh, for our for free and open source software. Uh, the goal is to, to see what is uh, so we have discussed about uh, packaging issues around uh, software with regards to distributions, how good to be a good upstream versus a good downstream, how uh, to try to uh, centralize some information that would make it like, easier for upstream to know dependencies, for example, of the software. Uh, we have to cover those type of topics. One aspect which has not yet been covered is the licensing uh, part of, of free software. Uh, so I will discuss about uh, what we have done inside HP to try to solve those licensing issues and improve the licensing landscape uh, as much as we could. Um, and the next speaker after me from Susie will also cover some copyright assignment aspects around uh, software projects. And we will finish by talking about the LibreOffice and packaging format um, on this project. Okay, so just briefly to, to introduce myself, um, my name is Bruno Kornack, I'm working for HP, I'm an uh, open source and Linux uh, architect, technology architect, I'm living in France, as you can guess with my accent, and um, I'm, I, I came down under to present to you uh, this topic, I'm doing uh, different activities in the open source community, I'm uh, leading some projects, so I know the upstream aspects leading Mondo Rescue and Project Builder. I am also packaging software for distributions such as Magia and Mondriva. So I also know the other side of the of the of the coin and and uh, the problems that we can have when we are packaging software. Um, and I'm interested by governance as well, so we will talk about uh, that aspect right now. Um, so first, a, a bit of uh, Ancient Greek, uh, you, you know, Greece has been very uh, popular recently uh, in the press for economical problems, but they are really at the heart of our uh, languages uh, in the past. So uh, the, the first thing to, to think about is when we are naming software is where does it come from? And the name of phosology is coming from two ancient Greek words. Uh, the first one is phos, uh, written in ancient Greek like that which means free and open source software in Greek. And uh, the second work is logos, which means science, study. So phosology means the study of free and open source software. Simple as that. Uh, what is the goal of the tool? So HP has, has realized, uh, you know, we are a very large company and we have a, a large usage of, of free software. We use it internally in, as part of our IT environment to help us uh, in different uh, activities. Uh, we use it as part of some of our products. We integrate some software components inside some of our uh, commercially sold solutions. Uh, so we need to be very cautious about what type of components we integrate, how we integrate them, do we respect the licenses, uh, is there any problem that we should look at, is there any redistribution aspect that we need to take care of, uh, how to provide, for example, access to the source code when we are dealing with GPL software, etc., etc. And in order to help us, uh, as the size of open source software was increasing internally in our usage and in our product, we, we would not be able to manipulate those type of information manually anymore. Uh, even dedicating resources to that was not sufficient. So at one moment in time, it became obvious that we had to tool ourselves in order to help us in the analysis of those licenses and being sure that we were doing the right stuff with the right software. So the creation of uh, Fossology has been uh, decided in order to reduce uh, licensing related issues for us and as it was really something very useful for everybody, we also open source it as a tool in order for other people to be able to have access to the same level of information and do the analysis themselves uh, on their part of software that we were using. Um, so Fossology is a framework, in fact, in which you can um, develop information around the licensing about the software that you are analyzing. Uh, 
it could do many other stuff, and well, now it's concentrating on license analysis. Uh, it does that by taking code which is existing, so you need to have access to the source code. Um, it processes it, saves the results in a database, and gives you a user interface web-based front end in order to navigate through those results and have more information about the licensing uh, of your software and the real licensing of your software, not the licensing of your software. So it's not because the project is saying I'm GPLv2 on its website that it's completely true. If you dig into the software, into the source code, you may find a large set of different licenses used for different parts of the software, which may evolve also during time. So that's also an activity that you need to pass regularly in order to be sure that you're up to date with regard to, to licensing information. Um, so Fossology is a tool which has been adopted by the Linux Foundation as part of its uh, working group around uh, compliance for, for FOSS uh, in, in all the activities they have around, around FOSS compliance. Uh, such as, for example, they have a, an, an initiative or as PDX for uh, describing a, f a single format to uh, explain the licenses of software, and I will detail a bit that later on. Uh, so as part of the initiative, Fossology is one of the tools which has been recognized as very useful uh, by the Linux Foundation and is supported by it. So how does the, uh, how does the tool work? Uh, so it works mainly about, so it's, 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 as we are in the, in the mini conf around cross distribution, um, the way we are using it is either with upstream code or with distribution code. And it's important for us because we are, for example, reselling distributions to customers. Uh, we also have to assess those distributions and the licenses information of those distributions. Um, it, it has been more true in the past, maybe, that it is today, because now distributions themselves are also using Fossology as a tool as part of their build process, or some uh, forge, uh, forges are using it as part of their build environment in order to integrate the license analysis in the build process, in the, uh, in the overall production of the software. But in the past, it was uh, even more critical to be sure that when we were selling um, one version of, the, of a distribution to a customer, we were already having all the rights uh, to do that correctly without vi violating any license agreement uh, presented in, uh, in the distribution. Um, so back to, to the needs it's created for the tool, is we want to be able to pass to the tool whatever format that our upstream people are giving to us, which could be a compressed star file for a pure upstream project up to a DVD ISO image for a full distribution. We want to be able to put all that inside Fossology uh, up to the tool to uh, decompress, uh, look back mount, whatever it has to do in order to have access to the source code uh, contained on the, uh, the container that we are manipulating and performing the analysis. So the goal is really to dig into the source code, find all matches of license uh, content, which could be extensive licenses, such as a full uh, license, GPL license as attached to a, a free software component, or which could be just a sentence mentioning this software is released under BSD, or uh, just uh, one file in, uh, in, in the README, you may have one line describing that the software is released under the BSD license. So it could be uh, very simple, it could be very complex. Uh, we should rely on uh, our own internal database of uh, existing licenses, known licenses, against which we are matching, and the, the matching is done in a clever way uh, to find license references inside the source code. Uh, in order to give a probability, uh, a plausibility of matching between the license that we have in our database and the licenses which are referenced in the source code. Um, so the, the engine behind that type of work is called NAMAS, that's what is mentioned at the back of the slide. Um, 
Nomos was not part of the first delivery of the Forcelogy tool when we released the tool under an open source license ourselves. Uh, it had some constraints that would not allow us to release it an, as an open source tool first. So we had another engine, and since version 1 or 2, if I remember correctly, uh, Nomos has been integrated inside the standard Fossology build, so now you have all the power and the same uh, speed of analysis as what we had internally uh, up, to, up to the latest version, thanks to, to this uh, analyzing tool. <coughs> so the process is really simple. Um, you submit code to Fossology. There is a web interface. You can upload software. You can give a reference to a file. You can browse your hard drives and upload a package that you have downloaded from somewhere. Uh, you can give a URL. You can give, a, a, as I said, a TAR file, a zip file, a JAR file, an ISO file, whatever you have at hand. It will be able to unpack it and find the source code in it and, and transform the analysis. And then you, you choose between a certain number. So you give some metadata around it to be able to navigate through the user interface more easily. And then you have a certain number of phases of analysis that you can trigger inside Fossology. Uh, the major one being the NOMOS license analysis. Uh, but you may also want to find some other metadata information, such as copyright, email, URL analysis, uh, mind, mind types association, and uh, some uh, headers. Uh, package headers information if you are, for example, uh, uploading a, an RPM or a DEB uh, package directly inside Fossology, uh, it will be able to do the analysis of the, uh, of the header of the package format and get those information, store them, and allow you to, to browse through, through that. So multiple uh, analyses could be performed and you have to wait. So the process is put in a queue. You may have uh, dozens of users interacting with, with a single Fossology instance. It manages different user access, and it, it manages a queue of processes. So you wait for your analysis. You have different information of the jobs being performed by Fossology. You can know where you are and what has been done by, by the tool. Uh, so going from uh, unpacking the software up to passing the normal license analogies, uh, the backend stuff, also copyright stuff, MIME types, etc. So all, all the phases are, are viewable by the user. Um, and of course, when it's a small job, like uh, just a, an upstream one megabyte type of project, it's easy and quick. Uh, when you pass a full DVD inside the tool, it can take a, a, some time before uh, the analysis is completely done. And then at the end, well, you enjoy the results. So you navigate through the web interface. And you have information about what the tool has found in terms of licensing available inside your, your software. So here I, I use my own project as, a, as an entry point for uh, analyzing the, the licenses in it. And uh, if you click on, a, on certain uh, licenses you are interested with, uh, then you have the references which are highlighted on the right hand side so you know that the GPL V2 Plus license has been found into a certain number of files, which correspond, in fact, to the autoconf here um, generation inside my project. And you see a certain number of licenses. So even if the uh, Mondo Rescue project itself is licensed under the GPL V2, you can see that when you look at it, really, what you have in it is a large set of different licenses, not only GPL V2 or later. Uh, you have some documentation, so you have GFDL mentioned, you have some MIT stuff, you have some public domain stuff. Not a lot of files, most of the files are without any license found. Uh, and, and most of the other where a license has been found are related to FSF or GPL. So it's pretty clean, I would say, except that I, at one moment in time I removed some of the headers of the, of the files which were obsolete. And I did not re re put again back uh, a license plate in all of the files as well. There are so many with no license found, and that's something I need to do. Uh, clearly, Fossology tells me uh, you have not done a good job identifying each of your source files and, and providing a license inside your source file to, to make life easier for people wanting to use your software. So if we look at the architecture of the, of the tool itself behind the scene, uh, so you have seen there is a, a web user interface. You also have some command line interface tool that you can use to trigger the analysis. 
uh, and if you want to automate a certain number of tasks. Um, those tools are interacting with one database with co which contains all the information related to the processing, the workflow around uh, pathology, so managing the queue. Uh, there is a, a scheduler, a job scheduler, which relies on that queue and process, launch the different agents uh, which are here, uh, and they turn on the, uh, on the software itself to perform the actions. So each action is performed by one agent. There is one agent, like the numbers for the license analysis, one agent for the mind type, one agent for etc. etc. Um, and the, those agents are interacting with the, um, with the repository for storing all the metadata information and with the file system to have access to the exact source code or the tar file or the uh, packages, ISO images that you have put on it. So the way it's working with the, um, uh, in terms of architecture uh, internally inside the tool. So if you want to, so Fossology is, uh, is available today back, and I, I have a slide on that, uh, as, as a public instance. So if you want to test it, it's very easy. You can uh, request for an account and, and try it. Uh, if you want to have your own Fossology instance internally, so if you are uh, a corporation which is large enough to worry about uh, license analysis inside your environment, you may want to, to host your own Fossology instance. Uh, and for that, you have to respect a certain number of requirements. Uh, it runs on a Linux system because it's using some of the uh, kernel facilities such as loopback mounting and stuff like that. Uh, Apache Web Server, PHP 5, PostgreSQL, at least 8.3. Uh, a certain number of libraries available uh, to do with uh, MIME type analysis, uh, extraction of, uh, of data, and a lot of commands to, again, do deal with the extraction of the different formats which are supported by, by the tool. Um, you need a lot of disk space and a lot of CPU resources because that analysis is not uh, uh, easy. Uh, from, a, from a CPU perspective, because you are performing all those uh, uncompressing stuff to do the analysis of the software, and then there is the uh, license analyzing tool which is comparing a lot of stuff. So it takes quite a lot of resources. Um, however, if you have small packages that you just want to check from time to time, it's easy to run it in a VM. I, I made a, a lab based on a, on a VM recently, and it's running perfectly fine. Um, just allocate enough RAM to, to the VM to not have any problem. So how was where so, so that image is, is from the original uh, fossilology presentation that I, I continue to modify across the time. This is uh, Bob Gobi who is uh, the architect around fossilology um, presentation of how um, conflicts were solved in the past. Um, and, and I, I keep it because I like it, and I like, I like Middle Ages myself, so I'm singing music from the Middle Ages, which, which has nothing to do with that, even if they speak sometime in the music of uh, wars and stuff like that. So, yeah, conflicts tend, were, were solved with uh, quite drastic solutions in the past. Um, today, when you have uh, conflicts, uh, you end up having articles in the press, on the web, saying that uh, you have violated a license, uh, which is another type of uh, conflict between companies. And <clears throat> really the goal is to avoid to be mentioned in such type of websites uh, or reports as a company. I mean, uh, there is no way, if you, if you are doing your job correctly with regard to license, uh, to the respect of licenses and the duties that you have mentioned in the license, there is no reason that why you would end up be mentioned on such a website. However, there are still people not reading correctly the license, not having the right attorneys or lawyers working for them and explaining to them what they need to do in order to be uh, in accordance with what the license is uh, providing to them. So, Fossology is one of the tools, not the only one, but one of the tools that allows you to avoid ending up being uh, shown by people saying you have done bad things with, with software you should not have done, uh, you have not respected uh, the constraints of the license. Um, the tool itself has evolved during time quite a lot. Um, so the first release has been in 2007. 
and uh, at that time there was no no specific uh, uh, so no Namas agent. It was quite an internal version status which was uh, put outside to to give an idea of what we were doing with that. Um, a certain number of evolutions throughout the, the years. The, the major version, I think the version which allowed the project to really take off was the uh, 1.2 uh, three years ago due to the Namos license scanner which was really much quicker than what we had before so allowing much more uh, analysis of software for large customers was really uh, wanted. Uh, backheads, the notion of backheads I will detail it later on which allows you to group licenses together to make uh, for example, you want to have the good licenses and bad licenses identified and, and an easy way for you, your lawyers to uh, get that information out of the analysis. Uh, new version 2.0 with a new scheduler, some independent model, re-architecturing of the software to make it easier to write plugins for the fossology in the future. And now we are at 2.1 uh, currently. <coughs> So the project is uh, getting new release every now and then when it's ready and, and when there is uh, uh, enough material to, to publish it. Uh, so I have a certain number of screenshots to give you an idea of what type of other information you can get out of Fossology. So some metadata information around the, the software that you are analyzing. So uh, the checksums are quite important because that's one way Fossology itself is trying to match different deliveries of similar software between different uh, distributions, for example. So when we are analyzing Fedora on one hand, Debian on the other hand, uh, there are a lot of commonalities between those two distributions uh, in, inside uh, with the different versions which are similar between the different products incorporated into the distributions. So it's not useful to reanalyze something which has already been analyzed. So if it's the same checksum, it's 99% of the time sure that it's the same software, so we can benefit from the analysis made by others. It's also a way for, for example, companies to exchange, if they, if they trust themselves about one analysis which has been done on a software, it's a way for them to exchange about that software has been analyzed, analyzed on our side, it gives that type of results, you can trust us, and that's all the metadata information linked to that piece of software we, we analyzed. Uh, as I said, backheads are quite interesting, uh, allowing you to group uh, licenses in, in pools uh, that will allow you to, and allow you, your lawyers most of the time to easily have a, a great idea on what are the problematic licenses from their point of view. And their point of view may be a non-technical point of view, of course, and also may not be uh, related to uh, what you would thought about. So it's not necessarily GPL versus non-GPL. It could be the fact that some piece of software have no license at all. That could be a very big problem. And in fact, in general, it is a big problem. So uh, those people tend to, uh, to identify where there could be problems. Uh, no license at all is a problem. Having the knowledge of which part of the software is licensed under the GPL, gives them indication on what they need to release in terms of software to the outside to be compliant with the license, for example, if there is redistribution, etc., etc. So grouping the licenses is quite important uh, for, for people in order to help them in the analysis. Um, since the more recent version, you have the possibility to do comparison between two deliveries of software. So it's most meaningful when you compare two versions, for example, of the same software in order to understand what has changed in the new delivery of that software with regard to licenses. So you want to be able to say, okay, CPIO in 2.9 and CPIO in 2.11, uh, I really want to have an idea of what has changed and what has changed here is underlined, for example, uh, at the bottom. Uh, there are some components which have changed. You can drill down into, if you click on, on the top file, you will have an, an explosion of what is in the top file, same on the other side, and you will be able to compare side by side uh, the two versions of a uh, set of licenses associated to the software itself. Um, so 2.0 was really an important version due to the restructuration internally, uh, the possibility to have uh, plugins added uh, more easily to the tool. Um, what is really important in terms of work right now is around SPDX and for this mini conf, that's one of the topics which is really important. Um, SPDX is a working group of the uh, Linux Foundation. 
which has been started three years ago, if I remember correctly. Um, <clears throat> the goal of the SPDX working group is to create a possible machine possible format, so XML based, which will allow you to describe each file being part of the delivery of a software. And each file will be described with a certain number of information, the most important one being the type of license associated to each of those files. So you can have, if you have an SPDX uh, description of your software, and we were mentioning another uh, format for upgrading uh, software earlier in the previous uh, conference from uh, Bidel and Tom, um, the goal of SPDX is exactly the same as the, uh, the other format, but for licensing purposes. And the goal is to help, um, so sharing license information between entities. So again, an entity which has done an SPDX analysis of a component, of a piece of software, uh, will be able to sign off this analysis. And some other company which rely on trust, uh, that lawyer uh, about his analysis will be able to reuse the results directly. So the goal is to minimize the risks, is to minimize the impact of the study of licenses on top of the software, um, and really, really to share license and competent information between, between companies, between consumer of open software. Um, so this SPDX format is now in version two dot something. Uh, as published by the uh, uh, Linux Foundation. Um, it's still mostly uh, a paperwork or a firework right now. There are some tools, some editors of the Expedix format which allows you to uh, make it easier to describe what is in Expedix, in, a, in an Expedix syntax, the content of a piece of software. And there is also an add-on which, which is being developed for Fossology uh, to add support, SPDX support to Fossology directly. Uh, other areas of investigation for Fossology in the future are possibility to do binary analysis or dependency analysis as well because the framework is here. It's just a matter of adding some agents to perform more activity on the software. Once the software is uploaded, it's easy to, to add content uh, to the analysis. So, <coughs> here is a a screen, a copy of a screen which shows you how could be the interface between uh, Fossology and SPDX. Um, so this is this uh, this plugin development is led by the University of Nebraska, and uh, the goal is really to integrate the generation of an SPDX format directly out of the analysis made by Fossology. So instead of providing just a user interface. So web user interface and license information such as you have seen before. Uh, Fossology will get a button and say generate SPDX format for me and it will be able to generate the uh, XML file format uh, compliant with SPDX that will uh, describe precisely in the SPDX format uh, the content of the software and uh, you will be able to, you, the person in charge of uh, the analysis will be able to validate uh, the SPDX description and join that SPDX description, share it with other companies, etc. or move it upstream. One of the goals, again, of those file formats is that upstream project uh, be interested by hosting the, the information, maybe not maintaining the information themselves, but at, at least hosting the, the major SPDX for, uh, file, describing the whole tree of files that they're delivering, and having some of the lawyers signing uh, the SPDX format to, to give a proof that the analysis is, is correct in the mind. Um, so you could do a lot of other stuff with Fossology um, and this is an open source project so the project is really welcoming contributions so if you have any uh, ID, any spare time to, to work on those topics uh, feel free to contact Bob Gobi, we'll be very happy to give you all uh, the entry points that you can imagine inside the tool in order to develop new agents or new plugins so that you can extend the possibility of, uh, of the tool. Um, myself, I have always the, uh, the idea to work around um, code dependencies. Um, as Fossology is doing the, analy the analysis of the source code, it could do 
Um, it could store in the database metadata around uh, code analysis, such as system calls, for example. Uh, I, I still have customers very interested by porting software to Linux and being able to use Phosology to parse their developed code internally, analyzing uh, on your original operating system, you reference those type of systems calls, which are um, could be X11 system calls, Oracle system calls, or whatever. Uh, and then finding in a matrix possibility to, to say, okay, those bricks that you are using on operating system A uh, are also available on operating system B, or you have that gap between those two operating systems, there is some system call missing, etc. So that's the type of activity you can do very easily with Fastology because framework is here, the, the, the environment is there, the workflow is there, you just need to add the right parser at the right level to make uh, the tool provide more services for you. So the same University of Nebraska um, is also, uh, so to, to make a long story short, there was a, a public uh, fossilology instance at one moment in time which disappeared, which has now reappeared uh, at the URL which is mentioned here. So you can have an account on, on this uh, fossilology instance, you can upload your software there, you can uh, analyze your software and get information around uh, the licenses that you have in your software. And, put yourself uh, more in compliance with what you would expect. So remove maybe some of the uh, missing licenses that uh, you have seen in my, in my software, for example. So since uh, last August, uh, during LinuxCon in, in, in San Diego, uh, Paul Germontre announced the availability of that Fossology instance. And uh, so it's, it's available, you can upload your software there and, and use it and start sharing information about uh, free software. The, the, the goal of, uh, well, the problem of having a public instance like that is uh, there, there is always a possibility that some people misuse the software. So try to find uh, missing or conflicting license information in piece of software and benefit from that to uh, create um, legal issues uh, with the upstream project. Uh, that's precisely not the goal of Phosology. The goal of Phosology is to solve those. So trying to work uh, in advance to identify the potential problems and work with upstream to solve them. And it's less critical to have that instance today available because that's uh, since the last 10 years we have worked with Phosology. We have passed tons of software throughout Phosology and all the problems that we have seen uh, with license coherency, lack of license, problematic license on some bricks, etc. We have already reported all those problems upstream and they have all, always been fixed very easily by the project themselves. So there are not a lot of issues today remaining in our opinion that would make that type of uh, public availability a real potential problem for uh, license analysis. Okay, um, so just because I'm working for HP and I'm, I'm paid by HP to be here, I, I need to make some advertisement. Um, so HP is doing that for, for two reasons. One reason is to be in compliance ourselves internally, so to be sure that what we are doing with free software is the right stuff and that we don't mess up with it. Uh, we release a tool under a GPL license itself, so we, we believe that uh, we can help the wool ecosystem to improve its knowledge around licensing management and have both upstream project and distributions improve their capabilities to deal with licenses. However, uh, we also think that some customers would like to be helped in uh, their governance aspects around uh, open source consumption and we have a certain number of services that we can deliver to customers to help them with regard to setting up a governance uh, policy manual, setting up, having an assessment of what is their current usage, setting up a phosology instance internally, helping them dealing with all the licensing problems that it could uh, have due to history or whatever. So HP is doing that on, on, on top of what we are doing uh, on a more pure open source aspect. And we are living also from services, so that's also part of stuff we can deliver to customers. 
um, you have here a certain number of links which are available for you to have more information around fossilology. Um, there are a certain number of quite prominent fossilology users, so except ourselves, um, Alcatel Lucent, uh, there are a lot of telco customers very interested by that type of tool because those guys like us are integrating a lot of open source components inside their commercial products. And so they need to be very uh, clean in the way they are using open source. Meaning, for example, that they don't want like links to be pointed at uh, uh, integrating BusyBox and not distributing the sources of BusyBox correctly. So, uh, Alcatel, Lucent, Siemens, they all have uh, telecommunication activities and they are all following very precise infosology. Um, some other users, uh, the French National Research Center or the other milieu to Forge, they have integrated fossilology as part of their Forge environment. So each project which is built and, and uses the service of the Forge to get the uh, version control system, the build system, they also have a license analysis tool, part of the environment for free. Uh, and they pass all the software through uh, Fossology to be sure that they are compliant in terms of licenses as well. So they have their own rules and they have, uh, they have set up the tool as part of the, the normal build environment for all the projects they are hosting. So OW2 is uh, an open source consortium. In Ria is a public research center in France which is producing both open source and commercial software. So for them it was quite crucial to be able to identify very precisely where were open source components used as part of the delivery they were, they were making around their software. Um, that's it for this presentation on my side. We have five remaining minutes to take questions on your side, if you have some. Yes, so this time we will show you the mic. Good night. Um, the issue of licensing and the licensing of metadata is very interesting and a number of other places are trying to aggregate it. Debian, for example, does a lot of work with their copyright files. Fedora has um, information that's going to the RPM file about the license. Yeah. Um, is there, this looks like a third set of that, are the license names and short and tags and things at least compatible between these? Because I know there was issues between Debian and Fedora when they were staying standardised yeah. That I is, oh, I'm upstream for Samba, by the way. So we're out, we were thinking of trying to host that kind of information properly within our stuff, make it clear what bits were what we want. Uh, so we want to make our licenses clear because bits of Samba are under bit different licenses, some GPL, some LGPL. So we've got good interest in it, but I don't want to keep three different standards for license names. No. So part of the SPDX effort, there is uh, an agreement on license names and, and shortcuts names mm. and long names as well. So SPDX format and the first delivery of the SPDX working group has been identifying a set of licenses first mm -hmm. and those licenses for each of them having a short tag and a, and a long name. And normally today I think both Debian and Fedora are using this list ah, good. as part of, so uh, for example in the, so I'm, I'm less familiar with the uh, dev stuff but they have the same mechanism. In the uh, spec format, you have a license tag, and the license sound tag on the right hand side, you use a tag mm. for the license. That tag now is part of, uh, is coming from SPDX. Oh, same excellent. Thing for Lydia, they're working on that. So there is convergence. The problem is that you cannot converge at the same speed as you would like because there is history. Those distributions have a long history behind themselves, and, and the use base, which is, the user base, which is large, so they cannot disrupt that necessarily the way they want. So you, you need to make a, a change in the format of the spec file or in the format of the control file for the year to be able to make that adaptation. But that has been done. And now, now they have also in the end, they have developed some tools to uh, control with regard to SPDX uh, the nature of the, of the control file. So there is, there is work being done around, around those, yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. I'm so glad because I just saw the start of it when Fedora and Debian were both starting, well, Debian's up for ages, but Fedora was starting their license list and noticing that it was uh, different. I'm glad things got better. No, and, and the fact that we improved that most of the lawyers or people interested by legal aspect and site distributions are also looking very closely at SPDs or a member of the mailing list they are. Uh, exchanging around those topics, so 
Um, it takes a bit of time. It's, it's not as quick as every person would like it to be. But uh, yeah, that's the list. That's the list of uh, of licenses which are referenced by uh, yeah by SBAT. So it's going into good in a good direction. It's I think there is much more progress on the licensing information part than what we have on the component naming part, for example. Uh, we are way behind uh, on that on that area, and because there are also much more differences between the distributions, so it makes stuff more complex. The granularity is not the same between different distributions here. It's much easier to agree a GPL v2 license, a GPL v2 license. That one is easy. A GPL plus, uh, then with some ex exclusion clauses, with and, and then it becomes a bit more complex. And uh, you you may find that the list is quite long because. Uh, on top of the uh, 60, 70 licenses identified by the OSI, uh, you have all the exclusion clause, all the specificities, which makes that it doubles, triples, quadruples very rapidly due to all stuff. And people have to agree on uh, the tag name and the license name and content. And some lawyers disagree between themselves on the, uh, even the names of some, such, such stuff. So, but definitely. <laughs> okay. Okay. You mentioned some um, organization using the directly in a forge. Yep. Do you know if there are forges like say GitHub who have thought about using Fostology? For instance, they go with free hosting of open source apps. Whereas, whereas they've got a, a, a specific commercial um, contracting option for, for hosting. Uh, they, are, they are using, in fact, they have, they have one of them, Project Forge, which is open source, which is making Forge. So they are using that Forge, and part of that Forge, which is the GeForce uh, Forge, uh, is the Forge Forge, they are using for that big way of the process, the workflow process. So that you, you have the uh, Version control system, you extract information, you build your software, you have the build environment, and then you check the licenses, and then you publish the software. So all those phases have been uh, very well defined and controlled. And so do you know GitHub is doing this? Or I don't know. They never heard about GitHub doing that type of stuff. Not up to now. And I can take a, a, a last remaining question while the next speaker is.